This is a special dedication to my little friend Lois who read me a story last night and made me cry. We've had uh, a couple of days uh, where we've been feeling a little bit sad um, in our family because we lost somebody who was very special to us. But she's gone to heaven and um, I'm back and I'm going to read you a really, really cool story. But Lois, thank you so much for reading me a story last night. You'll never know how much it meant to me. Okay, this story is called The Smartest Giant in Town by Julia Donaldson. Did you guess? <laughs> so here we go. Come and join me. The Smartest Giant in Town by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. Are we ready? Oh. George was a giant, the scruffiest giant in town. He always wore the same pair of old brown sandals and the same old patched up gown. I wish I wasn't the scruffiest giant in town, he said sadly. Poor George. But one day, George noticed a new shop. It was full of smart clothes. So he bought a smart shirt, a smart pair of trousers, a smart belt, a smart stripy tie, some smart socks with diamonds up the sides of them and a pair of smart shiny shoes. Now I'm the smartest giant in town, he said proudly. George left his old clothes behind in the shop. He was about to go home when he heard a sound. On the pavement stood a giraffe who was sniffing sadly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my neck said the giraffe. It's so very long and so very cold. I wish I had a long, warm scarf. What do you think George did? <gasps> Cheer up, said George. And he took off his stripy tie. It didn't match his socks anywhere. He wound it round and round the giraffe's neck. Thank you, said the giraffe. As George strode towards home, he sang to himself. My toy is a scarf for a cold giraffe, but look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. Oh, dropping the book now. George came to a river. On a boat stood a goat who was bleating loudly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sail, said the goat. It blew away in a storm. I wish I had a strong new sail for my boat. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his new white shirt. It kept coming untucked anyway, he said, as he tied it to the mast of the goat's boat. It made a magnificent sail. Thank you, said the goat. George strode on, singing to himself. My toy is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. But look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a tiny ruined house. Beside the road stood a white mouse with lots of baby mice. They were all squeaking. <coughs> What's the matter? asked George. 
it's our house, squeaked the mother. It burned down and now we have nowhere to live. I wish we had a nice new house. Oh dear. Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his shiny shoes. It was giving me blisters anyway, he said, as the mouse and her baby scrambled inside. The shoe made a perfect home for them. Thank you, squeaked the mouse mice. George had to hop along the road now, but he didn't mind as he hopped. He sang to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. But look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a campsite. Beside a tent stood a fox who was crying. <laughs> What's the matter? asked George. It's my sleeping bag, said the fox. I dropped it in a puddle. I wish I had a warm, dry sleeping bag. Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his socks with diamonds up the side. It was tickling my toes anyway, he said, as the fox snuggled into it. It was a very fine sleeping bag. Thank you, said the fox. George hopped on, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat for a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox, but look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a big, squelchy bog. Beside the bog was a dog who was howling. What's the matter? said George. It's this bog, said the dog. I need to get across, but I keep getting stuck in this mud. I wish there was a safe, dry path. Oh dear. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his smart new belt. It was squashing my tummy anyway, he said. As he laid it down over the bog, it made an excellent path. Thank you, said the dog. The wind started to blow, but George didn't mind. He hopped on, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. My belt helped a dog who was crossing a bog, but my trousers are falling down and I'm the coldest giant in town. Suddenly George felt sad and shivery and not at all smart. He stood on one foot and thought, I'll go back to the shop and buy some more clothes, he decided. He turned around and he hopped all the way back to the shop. <gasps> but when he got there, it was closed. Oh no! Oh no! cried George. He sank down onto the doorstep and a tear ran down. He felt as sad as all the animals that he had met on his way home. 
Then, out of the corner of his eye, he saw a bag with something familiar poking out of the top. George took a closer look. My gown! he yelled. My dear old gown and sandals. George put them on. They felt wonderfully comfortable. I'm the coziest giant in town, he cried, and he danced back home along the path. Outside the front door stood all the animals that had, he had helped. They were carrying an enormous present. Open it, they said. George untied the ribbon. Inside was a beautiful gold paper crown and a card. Look inside the card, George, said the animals. George put the crown on his head and he opened the card. It said, your tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe, your shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat, your shoe is a house for a little white mouse, one of your socks is a bed for a fox. Your belt helped a dog who was crossing a bog. So here is a crown. A very fine crown to go with your sandals and gown. Of the kindest giant in town. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it lovely when people are kind back to us? Good night, everybody.